One of the bands I have enjoyed listening to over the years is Genesis, ever since being introduced to them while at university. A band whose first album back in the 1960s flopped because when music shops received it, they took one look at the band name and put it in the religious section. With it being prog rock, the two things didn't really fit together very well. As with many bands, there are controversies. Was it better when Peter Gabriel was a singer in the early prog rock years? Or when Phil Collins became singer and they sold out, becoming pop and more mainstream? You can tell what my opinion is just by the way I phrased it. The third vocalist, Ray Wilson, is mainly forgotten about by most people, including Genesis themselves. But during the Phil Collins years, Genesis released a single, Jesus, He Knows Me, the story of a fictional TV evangelist calling people to send money to him in order to be saved, calling people to trust this evangelist more than anyone else. Some of the words, Jesus, he knows me, and he knows I'm right. I've been talking to Jesus all my life. Oh yes, he knows me, and he knows I'm right. And he's been telling me everything's going to be all right. And then later on in the song, even more scathing, you don't have to believe in the hereafter, just believe in me pointed criticism of something which have grown up for those big TV ministries. I read not long ago about one TV evangelist, probably not TV so much nowadays, who needed money to buy a private jet plane. Apparently he needed to travel a lot with his ministry, fair enough, but couldn't travel on a normal plane with normal people because it would affect his prayer. What is that saying if he's saying he's so important he needs to travel on his own, away from everyone? At the same time, linked in with these big TV evangelists and things is the idea of the prosperity gospel. If you give to this ministry, if you pray enough, you will be given lots of money by God and be ridiculously wealthy. I don't remember seeing that in the gospel anywhere, to be honest. But let's move on to today's epistle, the letter to the Romans. This reading in a letter to a fairly new community of Christians in Rome seems to sum up so much of what being a Christian, being a follower of Jesus, is all about. Love, hate evil, hold on to that which is good, love one another. Show honour to one another. Be full of enthusiasm to serve God. Rejoice in hope. Be patient if you suffer. Keep praying. Contribute to the needs of the saints, to the church. Show hospitality and welcome to strangers. Bless if you are persecuted. Don't curse. Celebrate with those who celebrate. Cry in solidarity with those who are crying. Live well with each other. Don't boast. Overcome evil by doing good. There's nothing there about buying a new jet plane for an evangelist. Nothing about being given untold riches if you pray enough. Rather, showing love, care, concern to those around you, serving the community, showing that following Jesus makes a difference to your life. Support the saints, support the local church. Show love and care to the community in which you live and serve and support the church. 
it seems so much to sum up the parish system really. We are all set within this Church of England parish, this roughly 10,000 people who live within the Vale, this hodgepodge of people, many of whom will only enter this building for baptisms, weddings and funerals, if even that. But we are called to serve them, to show that God loves them, no matter what is going on in their lives, no matter what they may or may not have done in the past, no matter whether they believe that God exists or feel that God couldn't possibly care about someone like them, we are called to show God's love to them and we are called to support the needs of the local church. We as members of the community of Saint Michel de Vaux, are not passive onlookers, expectantly waiting to see the church grow through the work of the rector, with no input, whether encouragement or whether assistance in practical or financial form. No, we are called to support the needs of the local church. It means encouraging and supporting the things which are happening, staying on for baptisms and welcoming families rather than the baptism families and party seeing everyone traipsing out of church to leave an empty church for them to arrive in. It means volunteering to help in the things which are happening or could happen. The family fun day yesterday being one example it means praying for our community and for the things which are going on, not just here on a Sunday morning, but throughout the week. It means giving financially and sacrificially to enable things to happen. Being a follower of Jesus is costly. Jesus summed that up in the Gospel reading. If you want to become my follower, take up your cross and follow me. It isn't about building up riches in this world. It isn't about receiving massive financial rewards from God. It is about following Jesus and being faithful. Coming to know Jesus more. Helping other people to know Jesus better, praying for others in their Christian journey and supporting the local church financially to enable the church's ministry to flourish. The costs of running the parish church are immense. I realise that. The financial cost of having a full-time rector is expensive but I can assure you it's nothing to do with buying a jet or other ridiculous costs I can assure you of that in fact my eyesight is such I don't think I'd be given a pilot's license even if I wanted one the parish share pays for the rector's stipend it pays for pension contributions it prays for keeping the deanery running and for things such as safeguarding support and training from the diocese. They are real costs and as you probably realise, we are not able to pay our way. Last year we paid roughly two-thirds of the parish share, which means the deanery needed to subsidise us. But the deanery does not have a bottomless pit of money and we're not the only parish in this situation. To put it bluntly, the money will run out, as will our reserves if we're not careful. The pew sheet tells us each week the previous week's collection and planned giving compared to the actual cost of operating the church. 
Do you ever look at that? If so, what is your response? Oh, that's a shame. Oh, that's funny. That's never going to happen. Oh, someone else will pay. Is it terror? Is it just, well, I can't think about that because I can't cope with thinking about it? Is it thinking, well, this ain't going to last for very long? We need to support the mission of the church. We need to help new people come to faith. We need to go deeper in our own faith. And we need to support the needs of the church. Maybe it might be possible for you to increase your giving. Although I realise many people are giving as much as they can in this difficult time. Or maybe you might be able to leave a legacy to the veil when you die, which hopefully won't be for quite a long time, admittedly. Because surely we want to make Jesus known to those who do not know him. Surely we want to ensure the parish of San Michel de Vaux continues to do this for generations to come as all of us in the Vale come to know Jesus more. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.